In this video, we're going to go over the configuration of the 3D Connection Space Mouse Enterprise with 3D Coat. If I click on the menu button here in the lower left part of the device, it will bring up the 3DXWare control panel. I'll close that for now and come back to it in just a moment. Alternatively, you can access the panel through the desktop icon for 3D Connection's home application. You'll see this panel with all of these different options. Clicking on settings is the same as clicking on the menu button. You can access the manual here. Also, you would want to start with a trainer if you're brand new to 3D Connection devices so that you can get acclimated to using the 3D Cap controller. It does take a little bit of getting used to initially. So I'll click on settings and then close that panel. Your overall speed can be adjusted here as well as making individual adjustments to each axis. If you reverse the action, rather than the cap controller representing a model in your hand, it will be more like a camera being held in your hand. But under normal circumstances, you would want to leave it at its default. Let's go ahead and close this panel. Under the More list menu, you can export your custom settings. You could import them later on, and then you could reset to factory defaults if needed. You can also access the manual here. LCD settings. There are times where you may want to turn the LCD screen off when the device is not in use. To do that, you would adjust the brightness to zero. That effectively shuts it off. Text size, you can change it from small to large. You can go with icons only, text display only, or both. I'll click OK. Now let's look at buttons. On the left hand side, this column is for your 12 customizable function buttons here at the very top, just beneath the LCD screen. This column is for your modifier keys. Then the third column is for this far right section of buttons here. These are all view related buttons. The top three are for storing view shortcuts. I'll demonstrate that in just a moment. These four will allow you to make quick changes to the view in the viewport. So for example, if I want to go to a top view, I can click this button. All of these, in fact, except for the fit button, have a dual purpose or dual function mode. As you can see here, V1 has two different assignments. Quickly tapping will initiate the first command. Holding it down for more than one to two seconds will initiate the second command instead. So it's a way of having two button assignments in one. And this is repeated all the way down except for the fit button at the very bottom as well as the 3D lock button. The 3D lock button simply disables rotation so that if you're in an orthographic view, I'll go ahead and click this cube icon, and let's go to a side view. If I were wanting to make some kind of a modeling operation, whether it's a Boolean, a selection or something of that sort, I don't want any perspective distortion. So what I would do is go to an orthographic view. And if you are navigating in any way, such as zooming out or panning, you want to make sure there's no rotation so that you don't have to center back up again. So 3D lock will prevent you from accidentally rotating out of that orthographic view. So let me go back to the side view again. 3D lock. If I now if I try to twist or roll or tilt, it will not allow me to do that. I can only pan or zoom. So I'll reach and I can feel the button here between these four. Now I can rotate if I want. I should mention up front that with the exception of the modifier keys, all of these need to be assigned manually for 3D coat. So let's go back to the menu here. And I want to start here at the top and we'll come back to the view keys in just a moment. 
But what I did is I set up radial menus for most of these 12 so that I can multiply the number of functions per button. You can use four or eight section radial menus, but currently the eight section radial menus do not display the text of custom macros. The issue has been mentioned on the 3D Connection forum, so hopefully that will change in the near future. All right, so now I can choose to use the freeze brush. As I zoom into the eye region, this would be a good segue into the creation of camera shortcuts using the top three view buttons. In 3D Coat, you can create camera shortcuts by hitting Control Up Arrow. That will enable you to create a shortcut, as you can see here. This allows the user to come back to the stored camera location at a later point. If I'm on this side of the object, it might take me a little bit of time to come back and zoom in. So what I would do is hit control left arrow to go back to the previous or control forward arrow to the next one. And you can cycle through if you have stored a number of shortcuts. So what I'll do with these top three keys here is set up this first view key to do the same function as control up arrow. And that is creating an assignment. All I have to do is tap that button to create a shortcut. Now, if I hold it down, though, it's going to respond to this one. It's going to go to the previous shortcut. If I tap button two, I've assigned it to go to the next camera shortcut. You may want to utilize this the same way, or you can just assign it to another custom function or feature, whatever you prefer. But I think this is the closest thing that matches the intended purpose for these top three buttons. Now, with your quick view keys, as I mentioned, these are dual function buttons. So it's like having two buttons in one. If you quickly tap, it's going to go to this first option. If you hold down, it's going to go to the second option. So you have your top and bottom, left and right, and then your front and back. The roll button turns a model 90 degrees in applications like Autodesk 3ds Max, Maya, Inventor, Revit, or other applications like SolidWorks. But we don't have a correlating feature for that in 3D Coat. In other words, it's not going to rotate exactly 90 degrees. We don't really have an option for that. So this basically can be reassigned to just about anything you want. Now, below that, you have the ISO views. And I found that in applications, again, like 3ds Max and Maya and whatnot, when you quickly press it, it goes back to the default camera view. In 3D Coat, I just reassigned it to toggle orthographic view on and off. The Fit button is essentially the same thing as Zoom Extents, which is Shift-A in 3D Coat. I forgot to mention the secondary function of the ISO button. I assigned the Zoom on pin hotkey to it, which is Shift-Z. It allows you to hover your pin where you want to quickly zoom in. So let me close this and demonstrate that. Let's say I'm out here and I want to quickly zoom in to where my brush is. I can hold down the ISO button so that it goes to the second option and it zooms right in. Now, if I want to frame up this object, I would click Fit. All right, so I'm going to in my freeze options, clear. Let's now take a look at the creation of radial menus as well as custom macros. I hit the menu button and we will use this first slot or button. If I want to create a radial menu, I would click here in this section. If you have already created some, you could just pre-select them here. If you need to edit them, you can click the little pencil icon. Also, if you want to delete one, click the little X. All right, so let's go to radial menus. We will create a new one from scratch. And we will choose an eight section. As I mentioned before, if we create a custom macro, it will just show the keyboard icon and nothing else. We will have to hover over the section for a second for it to display the name. That can be a little bit difficult to work with. Let me just go ahead and create a custom macro now by going to the macros section. Scroll down. You can use these default ones. For example, like undo and redo, and we will see this icon in the section. 
The only one that doesn't show any text is custom macros that we create from scratch. So I'll create a new macro. Click there and we can give it a name. Pose tool. And then here we enter the hotkey assignment. Click save and we see it listed here. If we want to just quickly assign a hotkey, we can click here and then type the hotkey assignment. But obviously the trade-off with that is you may forget later on what that hotkey is actually assigned to. Let's go back here and choose number pad, uh, virtual LCD, mouse if we want to use one of these for a mouse button. Let's go back to macros. I'll speed up the playback for just a bit while selecting the remaining functions. Let's close that. Now we can test it out. We have all these macros that we created. Click on that one. Before I conclude here, I want to share some of my radial menus so that you have some food for thought as you create your own. And I also want to quickly show how to create hotkeys for anyone who's new to 3D Coat. When you hover over a tool, you'll see a tool tip. If it does not have a hotkey, you'll notice at the very bottom that one is not assigned to it. It'll also give you a hint as to how to create one by hitting the end key, E-N-D, on your keyboard. So, for example, the absolute brush, I would hit the end key and then make the assignment. You can do the same for your workspace tabs, which I would highly recommend because for one thing, if you are using the freeze brush, you do have some extended functionality in the paint workspace and the freeze brush in the paint workspace works interchangeably with the freeze brush in the sculpt workspace. Whatever you paint in one will work in the other, but in the paint workspace, you have the ability to use condition painting, and that allows me to paint more in crevices or more in extruded areas and so on. You would wanna use the freeze brush here to paint that freeze mask in the crevices if that's what you wanted. And then when you're done, go back to the Sculpt workspace and proceed to Sculpt. You can invert the mask, clear it, or smooth it. Invert is Control-Shift-I, just like in Photoshop. And it's also Control-D, the same as in Photoshop when you clear a selection. Also, pop-up panels. I created a radial menu for those as well. If they are docked in your workspace, they will show up just like they are here. Same scale, and they will also have all these attached panels that you have docked in this section. If you want those to be independent, you need to drag those out and let them be free floating. Then you can scale them to your liking. Once you scale them the way you want, then 3D Coat memorizes that. So for example, brush options, if I want that to be completely independent so I can scale it, I don't have to scroll down each time. I can just drag that away. Now move my cursor away. If it doesn't disappear on its own, just clear it there. But now, again, just swipe down and it's right here by my fingertips. Same thing with presets, if you want to scale that uh, to your liking so that you don't have to reach across the UI. Same thing for the E panel. It's the E key, but you can bring it right to your cursor by assigning it to a button on your device as well. Symmetry. I set up a radial menu for not only the symmetry panel, which is the S key, but also symmetry toggle and sim copy for the sculpt workspace and sim copy for the retopple workspace. 
These two, you have to sign hotkeys on your own. Uh, sim toggle, I believe is Alt S. It's the same as this one. So that's helpful. Whenever you have already set up your symmetry to work, you can show the plane or have it hidden. And then again, you would want to set your axis plane here. If I want that plane to be visible again, turn it on here. But now later on, if I want to just simply turn symmetry off temporarily, I can do that just by swiping just that quick. Sculpt adjust, I set up for transform, move, pose, and cutoff. Um, sculpt objects, primitives, muscle, box layer, split. Just assign my most frequently used brushes to a few others. And then smooth all. At the very bottom, I assign a hotkey to that and assign it to a button as well as undo. And that pretty much concludes this look at configuring your 3D connection Space Mouse Enterprise in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.